Friends, please Thank be you. seated. So good to be together today. Please be seated. Would you uh, give a hand to our worship team? Just so grateful for leading us in worship into God's presence this morning. Uh, I'm Jamie, for those who don't know me, and this is my wife, uh, Katrina, and we thought because the theme is Thrive Together today, that it would be a, a good Sunday to do the message together. And uh, it's been an interesting process getting here, let me tell you. There was a, I was thinking about that this week. Uh, many years ago, we did a little wallpaper, um, what do you call that? A border. A border mm -hmm. together, and, yeah. and it wasn't working out too well working together. So I went off and played basketball. When I got back, Katrina was all done. That seemed to work out really Perfect. well. That's not the strategy we use for today. It's been fun to plan and prepare together. Just grateful to be sharing this message mm -hmm. together. Absolutely. Yeah? No. Nope. No? Nope. Oh, yeah. Right. It's funny. I mean remembered at nine but didn't remember it <laughs> thriving thriving this series um, just a great way to begin I think fall as fall tends to be uh, the beginning of a lot of things and uh, and just the reminder that it, that we want to do the things that we do um, under this umbrella of God desiring for us to live life and to thrive in all that we do and, and just the many ways that that God can help us um, to to do that. Um, <clears throat> I think for me, um, beginning school, I'm a high school teacher and, uh, and you know, sometimes it's a little hard to, to get back into that groove after a really great summer um, and to change gears. But, but even in that, um, just being reminded of, of whatever you do, do it for the Lord. And just when we kind of approach things in that vein, how, how things can, everything is enhanced and, and is so much, so much better. And we can thrive in that. And, and even in my own, um, my own work and just some of the things that I've been trying to incorporate and in, involve some of my own colleagues and in, in um, just some of the things that, that bring joy to my life um, to help me thrive there as well. And so it's been a good reminder yeah. for me. So the premise of this series has been that we have a God who wants us to thrive. And we started the series with uh, the theme starting with prayer, an amazing story from Nehemiah. Last week we looked at when things get hard, how can God help us thrive through hard times? Uh, those messages are on our website if you want to check them out. Again, today we're talking about Thrive Together. I had an experience recently where I was in uh, Killarney Provincial Park, and uh, this is uh, my good buddy Rob, who I've, I've known since kindergarten, and his son Ryan, and then Caleb, uh, our youngest son, is in the canoe with me. So this is the fourth year in a row that we've done this trip to Killarney. It's become a bit of a, a tradition, and it's been so amazing at many levels. One of the levels is, to, to be honest, up until this year, we had incredible weather, so much so that my, my buddy Rob, because I'm a minister, a pastor, and a Christian, he was sort of associating my presence with him in Killarney Park for the reason that we were having the good weather, which is a lot of pressure, and then reality it's home because this is what we had this year. Uh, we had a day of rain where we were under tarp for most of the day, and then when we came back, uh, it was a 16-kilometer paddle straight into the wind, like ferocious winds, winds that were so bad that we were going hard as we could, and, and it really was like we weren't moving. And so we needed to develop a, a strategy because that just wasn't working. So what we did was we said, hey, uh, Ryan, my buddy's son, he, he's not as strong because he's only nine years old, so we said, he's struggling here. Let's put him in one of the canoes with all of our stuff. And the three of us, we'll all put our horsepower together in one canoe and we'll tow him behind us. And, and for the most part, that, that started to work pretty well. We moved up the lake into this wind um, and, until we had a little snag when the rope broke that kind of has connected. <laughs> So we, we went and got him and tightened up the knot and we were okay. And, and, and just to say, you never know who knows who. So if you happen to know my, my buddy Robin Kim Kressel, I don't know that his wife knows about this part and probably doesn't need to. So just, you know. But we, we finally got there. And I got to tell you, like, it, it, for us it was quite an accomplishment. And, and we all looked at each other and we, we, said, we said pretty much this. We said, holy cow, I can't believe we made it. We never would have made it if we hadn't have worked together. Friends, isn't life sometimes like that? We were made to be in relationship with each other. And, and the truth is that when we thrive together, sometimes it's the only way we're going to make it through this thing called life. There's a beautiful passage in Acts chapter 2 that just describes um, what it was like, this fellowship of believers as they were coming together um, as 
uh, as one group and just how they lived life and um, just a, an amazing example of, of just thriving together. Um, and so this is what it says in Acts chapter 2. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. I think um, just the, the beauty of it is just the, the working together, of supporting each other, of, um, of making sure that everyone is taken care of. But, but in particular, there is there's one line in there that uh, talks about the believers coming together and they had everything in common. And um, I just, I think that there are many groups that we are probably a part of. There are lots of things. We may have um, colleagues at work. So we have, you know, may have a great um, group at work that we um, socialize with, we feel supported by. Um, maybe it's a, um, an activity group that you're a part of. And, uh, and again, you can feel a lot of joy and get great um, community from those groups. But there's something special about adding that element of faith. When you are together with other believers in, and that you share that in common, the depth that those relationships go to is something very special and very, um, uh, just the idea of thriving, just to be able to, to share, um, to share that knowledge of faith. So even if some of those things happen to be um, that might overlap. So maybe there is a group. Uh, I know we have a, a running group that uh, that meets that are all um, coming from North Bramley, and and so to share that activity, but to add in that element of faith, to include prayer, to include thanks to God for what you're doing, it just deepens deepens everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there's that element of being brothers and sisters in Christ, this spiritual friendship, which is a part of this early community that is described in Acts, uh, would, would highly encourage reading through that, those verses, Acts 2, 42 to 47, to, to really think about what, it, what is important to you as you experience Christian community, because it was a vision um, for the early church that, that continues to be part of our vision for, for this church. When you, when you read about food and, and they got together to share meals, um, we hear and see and experience that in, in, in many, at many levels. Uh, when you think about being added to their numbers, the community was attracting others. We, we pray and hope for that for our church as well. There's a piece that was in there about pooling their resources. And, and it's interesting, back uh, several years ago, I was a part of uh, one of our newcomers' courses, and it, we called The Way. And this particular group of people, we studied this passage that night, and uh, they were really ca caught by this image of sharing and pooling their, their resources. And, and around the table, people were in situations in life where they were struggling to make ends meet, if you will. And so they, they had this, someone had this idea, could you imagine? And they were really kind of enjoying each other. We, this is our third or fourth week together. And so they were, they, they, someone said, could you imagine if we, if we sold our homes and sold our vehicles and we pulled our resources together and we, we lived together and we shared a vehicle. And, and there was a, uh, someone who was um, a senior who had, had grandchildren, there was a young single mom who said like, we could help each other. It was just like this amazing conversation. And then, and then they look at me and they go, hey Jamie, so are you in? <laughs> and I was like, well, I, I really love the idea, like I really do, but I would definitely need to talk to my wife before I made a commitment like that tonight. So, yes. But I love that they caught the vision of what it's like when we are so connected that we could share our, our life together in that kind of way, even sharing our resources. As, as, as idyllic as this vision is for the early church and the Christian community, I really do think we need to offer a warning, though, that the Christian community is never going to be perfect. Because we are made up of human beings and sometimes we mess up. 
Sometimes we, we hurt one another. We say the wrong things. We, we, we miss people. And, and so just want to name that uh, the reality of it is that the Christian community, as good as it might be, as good as it can be, will never be, be perfect. Um, these kinds of things happen in our church, and I'm going to share a story of something that happened in, in our family, in, in our life, but I, I know that I can do these kinds of things within my church relationships as well, and just, just being real here that we're all human beings, and these things can happen. So a couple of weeks ago, I drove our, our middle son, Cameron, he's uh, 16, he's 17 on Tuesday, actually, and he's, if you don't you know Cam, he's six foot four, he's a big basketball player, he's a, he's, a, he's a great guy. And so I drove him to his appointment early one morning on a Tuesday, and he grabbed his bike out of the back of the van, but he forgot his backpack. And so he, he texted me when I got to the church, I got his text, hey, Dad, I forgot my backpack and I really need it for school. Can, can you bring it? And, and I had a day, like Tuesdays are sort of a day where it's kind of meetings and, and fairly tight agendas. And so my first response when I got that text was like, oh, my day is ruined. You know, how can I fit this in? And anyway, I texted him back to Cam, I can get there for 9.30, but that's the best I can do. Um, just before I left the church, I sent him a note saying, hey, I'm on my way. And when I got to his school, Heart Lake Secondary School, I was kind of anticipating that he would be waiting out front for me to kind of drop off this backpack and I would just kind of, you know, keep, keep trucking. And so I get there and, and he's, he's not outside waiting for me. And I don't know if this ever happens to you, but all of a sudden, like something inside of me just went like, like bananas, like berserk. I started getting really, really upset. And it, it, obviously it's not that big a deal, but in the moment I, I was, I was getting, really frustrated by this. And so I, I phoned him and I said, Cam, I, I'm here, where are you? And he said, I'll be right out, Dad. And he was out very quickly and he came to the van and he opened the door and he no sooner had that door open and I, I, I kind of laid into him. And I said, Cam, like, where were you? I, I'm, I'm, it's 9.30, I said, I'd be here, I was here and I expected you to be here and I, I've, I've moved heaven and earth to bring your backpack. And... <laughs> he looks at me and he says, so genuinely he's not covering anything up he's not making up a story here I, I i had no question just the way he said it so 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 honestly and openly and authentically he looks at me and says dad i was in class <laughs> last night you and mom said please make sure you don't skip class or are late for class because we don't want any more calls <laughs> from the office I'm glad you find it funny. <laughs> Honestly, I was dying. I just felt so bad. I said, Cam, here's your backpack. I'm so class. sorry. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't leave the parking lot. I kind of drove off to the side and just thought about what had happened for a moment. Um, and I sent him a text and I said, hey, Cam, I'm just so, 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 capital letters, so sorry. And um, please, please forgive me. I'm glad that you were in class. And he texts me back. He must have texted me from class, but yeah, anyway. Yes, that's okay. But he texts me back and he says, no problem. I mean, NP, because no, no need to put a whole word when a letter would do. So NP, totally get it, Dad. Don't even worry about it. So, friends, if we're going to acknowledge that we live in a community that's not perfect because there's something called human beings that are a part of it, then we, we just want to be that kind of gracious with, with each other and just love the way Cam responded. Uh, there's a church that has a slogan, they, they say, no perfect people allowed. <laughs> and I just, just want to name it if we talk about this community that can thrive, that um, we, we, we're real and we're going to make mistakes, um, but we just want to own up to them and grow together and be gracious with, with one another. Mm -hmm. The question for us today really is, how does the church help us thrive together? Well, to begin with, um, thinking about different scenarios, help in times of crisis. I mean, when we are a part of a community that, that knows us, um, when crisis happens, it is the most incredible thing to know that you're not alone. Um, in, in our life, I thought the biggest crisis I think that we experienced, obviously, is the loss of our, of our son. Lucas, and when that happened, we were far away. We weren't, uh, we weren't here. Um, but as soon as we arrived home, we were met at the, at the airport by people 
from North Bramley, our friends, um, our church, who came to surround us as soon as we got there, who helped to walk through each and every step of the process that we had to now do. And we didn't have to do it alone. And uh, I mean, when to try and do that on our own, um, I cannot imagine. I cannot imagine how we would have survived or um, come through the way we did, not having, being surrounded by people who did practical things for sure, maybe um, offered meals, um, cleaned our house, um, uh, just helped to do those practical things. But there are a lot of people in this church, so it's not like there were that many people at our house all the time. Um, but just, again, that, that community of faith knowing that people were praying for us i think that was one of the one of the hugest things that that gave me strength just you know i managed to get out of bed every day and i i have no doubt that i was able to do that because people were praying so those times of crisis just being able to talk about being able to thrive in the midst of something that is can break can break you it is you know, through a community like this. And I, I think that <clears throat> this community does this very well, too, through funerals. I mean, we have teams, we have people come in who have funerals here, and our team comes and surrounds them. And so I hope they experience that that community, that that desire to um, to walk with uh, to with with people through times of crisis, and and that's just an example of God being with us, and that we aren't alone. Mm. And small groups are certainly one of the ways that we thrive together through times of crisis. That's one of the reasons that we really encourage people to, to get into a small group. It's a way to grow in faith, but it's also a way to find support. And there's been amazing stories over the last several years of people um, getting incredible support uh, from their small group through times of crisis. We mentioned last Sunday when we talked about when things get hard, sometimes when we're in a crisis, we actually turn away from both God but also from the people who, who can help us and love us. I just want to name that today. Uh, some of us here, some of us who are online this morning, uh, that can be a, a very normal tendency and just would encourage us to to both lean into God and to one another and to, to ask for help, to let people know some of these challenges so that we can support one another because we can't support people uh, when we don't know what, what's happening. The other piece would be as a community to keep reaching out. Sometimes you reach out to somebody and they, they don't get back to you or they're, they're not ready to get together yet or even to come back to church if they've been through something really uh, like a huge trial in their life. Keep trying, keep reaching out because God will bless and honor that over time and they'll know they're loved even if they don't respond in the way that you're looking for mm -hmm. at this time. We, um, we also wanted to talk about serving Jesus together as a way that we can thrive together. Uh, we have this incredible mission that we are a part of as Jesus Church, and we get to do it together. The Apostle Paul offered some very uh, practical words in 1 Corinthians 12 when he offers this image, um, this vision of what it would look like when we served Jesus together. He, he writes, there are different kinds of gifts but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and everyone, it is the same God at work. And so we have different gifts, but God is involved in all of those gifts. And when you put them together, you become what the Apostle Paul is referring to as the body of Christ. He goes on to say in verse 12 to 14, just as a body, when we think about our physical bodies, our, our, each of our bodies have many different parts, and they're all different, but they're all very important, and they work together to make it happen. Same with this body of Christ image, the church that Paul is offering. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, and so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit. It's, it's the Holy Spirit working through all of us together so as to form this one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one Spirit to drink. Even so, the body, the body of Christ, is not made up of one part, but of many. And when we put those gifts together, um, it's, a, it's an incredible thing to see, but even more incredible to be a part of. It really is when uh, there are so many teams around uh, around North Bramley, so many things that are happening. And um, if you've ever been a part of, of one of those teams that accomplishes um, a, 
an event, puts an event on, puts on um, any kind of outreach or something that's happening here. It's it's pretty exciting to see it come to fruition. And when <clears throat> when you're a part of that and you get to serve and you get to do something that you are gifted in and it feels very easy to do. Um, I And then others who have a different role on the team, you look at them and think, oh, that is really hard. I would not want to do that. But thank goodness that person is doing that. I mean, for example, I, I love to to um, to help out at uh, our in summer uh, at our camp in the in the summer. I love to lead the kids in worship, to to get them singing, to get them all excited about whatever happens to be going on for that day. Um, and then off they go to a number of stations. And uh, one of those, you know, Nancy, very oh, for many years is has led our crafts and I know we've talked and you know she would say you know oh thanks for doing what you do and I'm like thanks for doing what you do because I would not want to go downstairs and do a craft I could not do that and lead a craft for these kids and and yet everyone who is doing those things when you are do, you just do them with such joy and and then it all comes together and also that whole idea that it is all coming from God and we are all working towards the same purpose in terms of even the things that we do are very different and yet our goal is the same our goal is to draw these kids closer to God to learn about Jesus in some way shape or form and so in that way we are connected in what we do but putting those things together to make it all happen and there are, are lots of examples around around yeah. here Alpha happens. we're gonna talk about Alpha in just a few minutes but Alpha is, is a great example it takes so many people to pull off Alpha each each week when you think about having, you know, 60, 80, 100 people having dinner together and experience this program. There's people who lead from the front. There's people who welcome. There's, there's people who, who pray for what's going on. There's people who lead the table in the small group conversations. There's people who work in the kitchen and do the dishes. And I'm telling you, like, that, that is as important as anything because that's a huge part of the evening. And I know the people in our church who are committed to doing the dishes each week at Alpha are just as committed to helping people discover this new life in Christ as the people who are leading from the front. It's, but it's all working together, and it's amazing. As a church, I think one of the things we can do is when we see somebody serving in those pieces that are maybe behind the scenes, like, let's, like, like doing the dishes on an Alpha night, just to continue to thank and encourage those people uh, that they're just as important and just as much a part of uh, any other, other role, to, to honor that, to encourage that, because it, it all works together. That's the image from 1 Corinthians 12, and it's all part of thriving, thriving together. We uh, have something coming up, which mm -hmm. is a great opportunity for us as a church to thrive together and serve and work together, it's called Absolutely. the Ride for Refuge. The Ride for Refuge, which uh, <clears throat> we've participated in as a church for many, uh, for quite a few years. Um, and this year and last year, we um, we were raising funds, particularly for the journey. And I mean, the journey obviously is something that has been birthed out of um, North Bramley and the heart for that community. And uh, and we want to see that community thrive. And so our opportunity to to volunteer to I mean, you might look at that and think ride for refuge, and the only thing to do is to ride a bike and raise some money. But absolutely not. Um, we are um, hosting uh, hosting this event um, here in Brampton and need lots of people to do lots of things, um, some to even simply stand and give directions so that the riders don't get lost and make sure they go the right way and so they don't do 50 kilometers instead of 25 <laughs> by, by accident. Um, so lots of opportunities to, to join in on that and again, it, it's... It, Regardless of what role you might end up doing, it is for this great, greater purpose, which, which always um, gives so much, uh, so much more to the task that you might be doing. So there, there'll be people after uh, service just out in the lobby at the Ride for Refuge kiosk. They'd be, they'd be glad to sign you up if you want to participate. Uh, we're, we're really hoping and praying that we'll have 50 more uh, through, through today and through this week. We've got 13 days. We're on, we're on target and we're on track, but we've got some work to do over the next 13 days and just want to participate in this together and see what God might do. We also thrive together when we think about families growing in faith 
together. And, and as we name Maker Fest is happening today, in part that we want to reach out to new families, young families, more families, and also help families grow in faith together. They say it takes a village to raise a child. And when you think about growing someone in faith, I think even more so, it, it takes a number of people active in, in people's lives to help make this happen. We certainly experienced this in our own family's life mm -hmm. over the years through what God is doing here at North Bramley. Yeah, definitely. I've, uh, I think we've, we've learned how to bring some of the things that that we might talk about and do here um, to bring them home, um, to incorporate that, that it's not just a, a Sunday morning thing that we come and we experience and then we go home and it's it's to make it a part of our, our life. And uh, over the years, there's been lots of ideas and different things that I know I brought home to, to, uh, to our kids. Uh, I remember one Thanksgiving um, season of Thanksgiving, um, I think someone had donated like this massive roll of paper. It was just big and I uh, you know it went on forever. So I used it for everything. So I brought home a big piece of paper that I put on our sliding glass door and said, okay, guys, we are going to fill this with things that we are thankful for because surely there we can do that. There are so many things. And, and just to, you know, even for ourselves to, to remember just to be thankful, big things, little things, let's fill it with all of those things that we can be thankful for. And we worked at it for, you know, for a couple of weeks to make sure that we could, would fill it. Um, we would do things around church about, around Advent. And so we took those home to try and incorporate those things into our family's life and to, you know, have our kids experience, um, as we learned and would grow that hopefully they would too and uh and regardless of where that went that it was an experience that we could do together at home as a family yeah there's um lots of people who choose to say grace at home from what they've experienced and been encouraged through the life of the church here those are things through which god works and does amazing amazing things all that to say that uh for for families if, if you want to help children grow in faith um, the research still says that absolutely being a part of a community like this is really important, but, but most children is greatest influence is one of their parents and what they see in their life. And so as parents choose to grow in faith and grow in Christ, believe me, kids are watching, they're following, living into that as well as grandchildren and just the next generation. So that's an important piece. I think another thing to think about is sometimes we get to a point in our life where our children and our grandchildren maybe aren't where we would have hoped or prayed or dreamed for them to be when it comes to their relationship with God. But to know that God is still at work. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3 says that our job is to plant seeds and water those plants, but that God will bring the gro growth. So as we keep living into this life as followers of Jesus, it gets seen and noticed, and you never know what God will do through that. So don't give up. Keep praying and keep living this life and watch what, what God will do. Finally, I want to talk about thriving together means inviting. The New Testament is really clear. The Apostle Paul says over and over again, love one another, be united, be connected, uh, be gracious with each other, because it can be challenging, as we named earlier. But it doesn't stop there. Jesus came with a love that was for everyone, the good news for all people. Uh, for John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son. Not so God so loved North Bramalee or Brampton or the United Church, but so God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And so there's this radical inclusiveness that we're called to as part of being a thriving together kind of community. And part of that means reaching out to people, inviting and sharing this good news as God, as God leads us. One of the best ways we've experienced that is through Alpha. And just really excited for Alvin Kelly to come forward with Jeff Hall and just have an interview today on Jeff's experience of, of Alpha and the way that God has, has worked through that. And as they're coming forward, I just want to give thanks for Alvin and his wife Maureen who really have been leading the Alpha program here with many other people involved, but just so deeply appreciate Alvin and Maureen's leadership and vision for us to continue to become a church that reaches people with this good news of Jesus. So thanks so much, Alvin, for your leadership and your work, woman. Good morning, folks. <clears throat> I love being up here to talk about Alpha. So you have to remember, today's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 6.30, here at the church, for dinner, for Alpha. Now I want to introduce you to Jeff. Jeff participated in our last Alpha course, and uh, 
So, Jeff, tell us about your life before you went on the Alpha course. So, I think I describe my life as, uh, it was good, but my, uh, my spiritual and faith life was quite uh, shallow. Um, it didn't have a lot of depth to it. Um, I was part of a faith community. I was part of a church, not this one, but heavily involved. But I, I didn't uh, go deep enough into prayer, uh, into uh, any kind of spiritual, deep spiritual work. Um, last January, my wife and family, we started coming here. And within about a month, we heard one of these interviews. And uh, Alita looked at me and said, I think we need to do this. And so within about a month of being here, we were in an Alpha course. Wow. Within a month. Yeah. So what happened on the Alpha course? Oh, man. Um, it was a little, I was a little nervous at first. Uh, I was nervous about the small groups. I was a little nervous about being vulnerable. Um, but honestly, those sort of deep connections that I made with um, some of those people in those groups, um, were just some of the most meaningful connections that I had made as a person with anyone in quite a while. Um, and just the, the feeling and the work of praying together, um, it just, it really grounded me and, 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 and sort of had a deep spiritual impact. Wow, and you actually started praying together. Yeah. Not easy, is it, the no, first no, time? No. 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 So what difference has Jesus made in your life since the Alpha Course? In terms of um, sort of just sort of like church life, one of the things that I look forward to the most about uh, coming to, to North Brimley every week is actually just seeing those people who were in my small group, and they they're just there are people who really already sort of ground me uh, mm. into this community, um, and also um, because of the prayer and because of just doing that being open to, to God's little nudges in my life, um, my work life and my family life, everything is just looked at through a bit of a different lens. Um, it's like seeing the world in a bit of a different way. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Folks, come and see. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks so much, Elvin and Jeff. Thanks so much. Love it. Love it. <laughs> That's great. So one of the ways that we're encouraging um, invitations for Alpha is through this movement called Luke 11.2. And if you look up Luke 11.2, it's basically Jesus' prayer, thy kingdom come. The idea is that one of the ways that Jesus' kingdom comes is through more people getting to know Jesus and experiencing his love and, and transforming work and being renewed and becoming a new person in, in Christ. And so the idea would be to put in your phone an alarm every day that goes off at 11.02 to remind us that there's people who God is inviting us to reach out to, to extend, to invite, um, to pray for. And uh, I, I would just encourage us to do that. In fact, I was, I was thinking this morning, wouldn't it be amazing if, if 11 o'clock people in particular, um, we love 9 as well, but at 11.02, imagine if a number of phones were all going off in the sanctuary every Sunday at 11.02. In fact, if you want to take out your phone now and, and, and put it in, I can even do it. So if I can do it, I know that you can do it. But it's amazing. Wouldn't that be great, eh? And this isn't just for this alpha. This is for us as a church, like, like always, to build this culture where God has us thinking about other people we want to share Jesus with. But I would love to have that happen on a Sunday morning and new people might say, what is that alarm going off? Well, that's our reminder that God has called us to reach people with this good news. Got to warn you, if you have it going off every day, it goes off every day. And so I've been in several meetings where Different it goes off, times. and I actually forget. Oh, oh yeah, it's 11.02. And then we'll stop for 30 seconds, and here's why it's going off. And there have been several invitations from people who've been at tables I've been sitting at because my phone had an alarm that went off at 11.02. The canoe trip I was telling you about earlier, it actually went off on me with a big backpack on it and a canoe over my head on a portage. So it was in my pocket. And again, it was like, I'm out in the woods. I'm like, what? Is oh. It's yeah, I just let it go because I was not putting this canoe down. It goes for about five minutes. If you're wondering how long it goes for if you don't turn it off. But it is a great practice for us to just really encourage us. I have to, I have to tell you, about, about a week ago, I was asked to see a, a young adult who I love dearly. And this is somebody who uh, 
does not have church experience. Maybe Christmas, Easter, that kind of thing. It, that's cool. Like, not in a, growing up in a home where, you know, the Christian faith would be being lived out in a, in a practical and, and, and normal, regular, as far as everyday way. But has come to a point in her life where she's going through some really big crises. Like she was, she was in pain and, and she was crying. And, and in the midst of this conversation, there was a spiritual crisis, which is at the heart of it. And she named it as such. The next morning, I, I'm praying for her and I'm thinking about her. And I'm thinking, I have to invite her to Alpha. Like that would be perfect for her. The song we're going to sing in a few minutes to close off this service. I was singing this song earlier thinking about those words for her. And I couldn't stop crying. I've invited her. I've sent her a video. I don't know whether she's going to come, but I hope she does. And I hope people who are in your mind and hearts, who you care for, who God's leading to reach out to, I hope they come too this Wednesday or even the next Wednesday and see what God might do. Friends, we wanted to pray together this morning about, about thriving together and living into this community that God invites us to, to live into. And so as we do that, we're going to invite a few people to join us. Mark. And Nikki and Alvin, if you could come now, and we're, we'll have a time of, of, of prayer together, and that'll lead us into our, our closing song this morning. In, in some ways, um, this is an opportunity for us through prayer to, to commit to this kind of life together, to both receive it, be open to it, but also build a church where we can experience these things together. And so just as a sign of, of that commitment, your participation would invite us all to stand, if you could, if you will, to, to stand as we pray and lead into this closing song. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we thank you again for your spirit's presence in this place. For Jesus and the resurrection life that he invites us into. That, that community, the church, that was always his idea. That his first followers had experienced something so beautiful, so pure, so amazing that they couldn't help live into it with all that they were and share it with others. That's the vision of that Acts 2 community. We pray for, we desire, we're committed to continue to build that in this place, this church of yours. So we thank you for the depth, for the love, for the relationships, for the history, longevity, for the people who have just walked through the doors this morning and those who are yet to this Wednesday and next Sunday and beyond, that we would experience this incredible thriving together with one another spiritual friendship that you offer us. We just entrust this vision, your vision, into your hands, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh God, I just want to lift up to you those who might be feeling alone, who don't experience or have the opportunity to thrive together in a community. For those that we know, may our eyes be open and attentive to see that, to make the invitation, to invite them in knowing, oh God, that it is your desire for us to be in relationship, not only with you, but with others. And I would also pray for those perhaps that are even among us here in the room who, who feel that loneliness, who for whatever reason have a wall or a barrier that prevents them from, from experiencing the community to its fullest. I pray that you would be present, soften their hearts, give them courage and strength to open up, to know that you desire only good things and life to its fullest for all. I pray in Jesus' name. 
You're a good, good father. There are people in this room, maybe people online, who right now are in crisis. Lord, we pray that you would give them the courage and strength to call out to you, to call out to one another, to reach out, to name the crisis, and then let your spirit move in them, through them, and through others who will reach back and support and encourage during a very, very difficult time. Lord, we all know that all of us at some time in our life will be in crisis. So help us always to remember that you are there to be called out to, to receive your comfort, your strength, your hope. And may each of us who may not be in crisis now be alert and aware to reach out to with humble hearts, gracious hearts, to care for those who we see in crisis. In Jesus' name. Father, thank you that you are gracious, that you are righteous, and you are merciful. We thank you for family, Father, that you build us up, that you bring us together and make us strong. Thank you, God, that you teach us through your word to be an example. Let us be Christ-like and salt and light in our families. Let us be unified. Let us go out and be community with our families and our children inside and outside of these walls, Father. Yes. Let this church, these people, come together and as one show generations now as was before to love and be love. I ask, Lord, that you would crush any generational curses and any afflictions that our young people have to face and that you give them your strength and power to triumph through their days so that they too can share who you are and bring peace and share your love. And we ask this in your name, Father. Loving and gracious God, Thank you that in Christ Jesus, you shower us with blessings. Thank you that you are a God who answers prayer. Thank you that you have heard these prayers today. Thank you that in your Holy Spirit, you give us love, joy, peace. That you give us patience and goodness and kindness. Lord Jesus, open our eyes to those around us who do not know you. Lord, there are family. Lord, there are friends. There are those that we work with. There are those that we play with. Lord, open. Open our ears that we might listen, that we might hear the pain story, that we might hear the questions that we might hear the brokenness. Lord, open our hearts that we may love as you love. Give each one of us a passion for those who do not know you. Lord, give us a passion that we may invite. Invite those people to church. Invite those people to Alpha. Lord, make us, this church, a church that welcomes the stranger. Make us a people who help everyone to belong. Lord, in the ancient prayer of the church, come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit.
Holy Spirit, come. Pour your love into every single person this morning. Lord, help us each to share your love as you love us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.